Hey, everyone, and welcome to our Open Leaderboard Recap Show. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. Diving into the leaderboard with me tonight is our sports analyst, Patrick Clark, and one of our senior editors at Morning Chalk Up, who's making his first camera debut. He's got some hot takes. Joe Jenton Palawa. How's it going, guys? Hey, I'm, I'm good to be I'm here. Pumped. I'm pumped. <laughs> I have I'm waiting, been I'm waiting. getting ready all day. I've got <laughs> to put each one wow. on an index oh card. God. So I'm ready. <laughs> Look at that oh staff. P- PC, are you going to be able to keep up with all of Joe's hot takes? Oh, I can. I don't know if you've seen his open scores, but obviously I can't keep up with him. <laughs> we're not. We're not getting that far down the leaderboard. I hope today. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, no. let's let's start with kind of the obvious. The two winners, Mal O'Brien, Saxon Panchik. Is this a surprise to any of us that they were at the top of the leaderboard? I'll take this one. I, I I think I'm going to speak for me and Joe. I think me and Joe were really the only one to pick pick her uh, within the morning talk uh, staff here. Um, obviously, I I chose her when we uh, when we did this. It was basically based on her previous experience and then being under the tutelage of Matt Fraser. I mean, I mean she's an HWPO athlete. Here you see her. You know, this is her, when she was doing the workout uh, at the affiliate, which she said during the press conference was really fun. Um, getting her in competition, um, uh, competition um, shape, and then here she is working with Jake Marconi, her coach, who will. will I'll, I'll talk about Jake Marconi later on. But uh, yeah, definitely not a surprise to me, and I know it's definitely not a surprise to Joe. Joe, what do you what do you have to say about this? No, I agree one hundred percent. I uh, I've been. Um you know, high on, on Mal uh, for the last couple of years now. Um, you know, interesting note, we, we the Morning Chalk Up, wrote about her, um, I want to say in early 2020, as she was making the move between Easy Muhammad and James Townsend. We wrote a story that was titled, I believe, The Fittest Teen Not in the 2020 CrossFit Open. Um, she was taking some time off at that point. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody had written about her before that, and we've had her eye on, uh, we've had our eyes on her the whole time. Um, so this is exactly the trajectory that I would have um, expected to see. And now that she's working with Fraser and spending her time in Vermont, I think there's nothing but, uh, you know, nothing but an upside here going into the season. What about when you look at somebody like Saxon Panchik, who, you know, he just joined the um, the proven training camp. What are your thoughts on him? PC, you've got uh, a lot of connections over there at Proven. Tell, tell me, tell me your thoughts, and then I have a couple too. <laughs> um, I think what we're seeing from Saxon, especially this Open, is not so much a, uh, a result of him switching over to Proven. Not right now. It's more of just his level of fitness. Um, he hasn't been Proven very long, so what we're going to see, the, the what we see of Saxon now, is a just a preview of what I think we're going to see later on in the season as he starts training full time. Um, like he is right now with that crew. Obviously, if you watch him, I mean, all you have to do is go to their Instagram stories every day, and you can see it's it's every lane. It's like every heat is like a a final heat of it, of the games where you have Brooke, Tia, you know, uh, Will Morad. Now you have Saxon in there, and then you're in, you know, Paulina Haro, who's an up and comer. You mm. know, Sydney Wells is someone we'll probably talk about later on as well. I mean, that, it he's uh, he's going to be he, he's already a product of great genetics and you know, just, just being a part of CrossFit for so long. And he's only 26 years old. So I'm not too surprised by Saxon. I actually, I, I think I picked Spencer as my black, uh, my, my dark horse, but, uh, so I picked the wrong pan check, but Saxon was one of those, one of those people who was, I had that finished in the top five. I think most people would have him finished in the top five, but him winning it. Now we have to give him a little bit more. We have to look at him as serious podium contender, especially having proven, um, having proven you know the rest of the season having the, being under that training camp and and not only that i mean he had a great off season great showing at the west coast classic um yep. clearly um you know uh really came into the open in 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 a solid shape um you said coming comes from great genetics all three panchik brothers finished in the top 50 spencer um mm-hmm. finished 28th and scott mm-hmm. 50th um so all three panchik brothers in the top 50 this year, um, all three heading, you know, solidly into quarterfinals. So we'll see, we'll see where they go from there, but I'm not, not, not surprised about Saxon's finish either. I mean, you know, winning the open is, is a big deal, but the fact that he had a good open and, and a solid 
uh, finish at the top of the leaderboard, anywhere near the top of the leaderboard, wouldn't have been surprising. Something interesting to note about the pan checks is this is the first time they all kind of broken away from each other too. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's a good thing. I think that really is. I think I wrote about something about Spencer doing, that's why I picked Spencer uh, as a dark horse, but Saxon as well. It's like, they're kind of, you know, they've been raising and going against each other. Now they get to compete against other people, other other athletes and train with other athletes where they don't know them so well and they can get pushed to different levels. You know, me training against, let's say if I was me and Joe were going head to head every day, <laughs> it's not going to be a challenge. At some point, we're just going to get sick and tired of each other. But, you know, Saxon breaking away from Spencer and prior to that kind of breaking away from Scott, they've all, they're, they're becoming their own people. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be a, it's going to be interesting to watch all the pantics. I know Scott said that he's retired, but of course on, uh, and our pre-show for 21, uh, 22.1, he said he's going to take the season as it goes. So, yep. you know, mm -hmm. obviously quarterfinals is next one. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, you and, never really know what to expect. <laughs> and Tia, Tia said that, I believe Tia on Instagram, I think today or yesterday, said that one of her, one of the most memorable things about this Open was doing all of the workouts right next to her training partner, Saxon Panchuk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's gonna, that's gonna make you better. Yeah. Now, when we're looking at, um, we'll go to the top 10 of the leaderboard. So we'll start here with the women. Any other notable names that uh, you were maybe surprised to see up there or that even you're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense for this stage in the game? Well, I think the biggest surprise is obviously uh, Laura Clement. Um, you know, no one knows either about her uh, besides that she, she's competed on a team. She's from France. Um, you know, she's 35 years old too, and she, she crushed it. Um, and the question is like, who is she? So I think we're all trying to figure that out as well. And if, if, if her open, uh, her open finish is an indication of how she might go on with the rest of the uh, rest of the season, if she's going to, you know, make the same type of run in quarterfinals and semifinals, we don't know. She's a kind of an X factor right here. Most of those other names are pretty, pretty well known or pretty known. That's the one that sticks out for me initially. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. Um, I was kind of looking at the ages of the top 10 athletes on both sides of the leaderboard today. And um, my, my thought going into doing this research was, was that the average age of the women in the top 10 would be younger than the men. And I was really mm. surprised when I crunched the numbers that it's actually a couple of years older. Um, we yeah. talk about sort of the youth movement and we think about, you know, some of these um, teen uh, female athletes who have really made a made a statement in the last season or so. But uh, 26 point 20, 26.2 um, was the uh, was the average age of a top 10 uh, women's athlete in the open this year. Um, yeah. so just over 22 years old for the men. Twenty four point five. Wow. And speaking of the men's leaderboard, let's take a look at that one now. Uh, PC, we can start with you. Any surprises or notable athletes that you see here in the top 10? Um, I think it's, I mean, it's a, a balance of both. I mean, the name that kind of sticks out to me is Phil Toon. Um, he's had a great open. He, uh, after 22.2, he was actually leading, but, and, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of stepped back in 22.3, which a 23rd place taking a step back, you know, um, <laughs> but that's the name that kind of sticks out to me um, because he's young and he's part of well, We're going to talk about that brute strength crew, but he's part of that brute strength crew down, down in Naples. And uh, he, he kind of burst on the scene um, uh, at Wadapalooza. I've seen, I've seen him before. Actually, I saw him at the train, uh, the, the, the fittest experience a year, almost a year, and a, a year ago down in Texas. And he podiumed there against a pretty decent field. And then of course we know about what he did in the semifinals on the online at the Atlas games. And then he also made a run for it. The last chance qualifier, the guy's extremely strong. Uh, mm -hmm. I think he has like probably a 600 pound deadlift. Um, and yeah, he's, his feats of strength are pretty well known, but, uh, and he, he's, 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 he's a guy who I think, if you're looking at him now that he's, you could probably pencil him in for the games um, right now. And I know that's, that's a probably a, a lot of probably high expectations for someone like that. who's really unproven, but I, I, he's a real deal. I've seen him in person three times and I, I, I think he's a. He fits, he fits right into that same age range too. I think he's 24, 25 um, mm -hmm. right there. And I believe unless my research is off on this, I think this is only his third open. 
um, this year. Um, and so, so taking a fifth place spot, um, in his third open, like you said, super strong, working with a great crew down in Naples. Um, and including, uh, Dallin Pepper, who's 10th on that list as well. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, really good crew, nothing but upside. Yeah. And speaking of uh, taking a look at the training camps and having that environment of other people to work out with, we spoke with Matt Torres uh, recently, and he just talks about how the environment has been so good for these young athletes. Uh, We know from the leaderboard that folks from Brute Strength are doing well. Any other training camps that you're seeing really thrive based on the leaderboard? Uh, Mayhem. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and uh on the men's leaderboard it doesn't show in the top 10 but if you look right there uh, right outside the top 10 is mr rich froning jr and right behind him is tyler christopher and the thing is we talk about how young that age those ages in the top 10 are you have two 30 year olds right there outside the top 10 one obviously going team and then you have tyler christopher who's 31 who's going individual but was came through the team ranks um and then you go back to leaders uh the female board and it's uh, all this talk about Haley, I mean, Mal and Tia, Haley kind of got lost in that shuffle. And I kind of wrote about that in my seven takeaways from 22.3 mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. Haley had, a, this is her best open uh, finish ever. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, it's a, a large margin if you look at points, but if you look at her finishes across the board, solid, just solid. She was one of four females that have top 10, uh, top 20 finishes throughout all the, uh, all the workouts. And yeah, she just, I, I was there. I was able to see 22.3 when they were doing it. And she was going with going in the same heat as Rich. And the whole time you could see her looking over at Rich. And she finished ahead of Rich in that 22.3. And this Haley Adams, um, I don't know if you know, many people probably didn't get to see her in person down at Wadapalooza, but she she looks stronger. She really does. She looks oh, she looks sure. like she's added, added some muscle. And yep. it, it definitely shows in uh, – She's in a good headspace. I talked to her. She said it's this happy she's been in a while and the strong she's felt ever. So the, the, the Mayhem crew, I think, uh, obviously, they're going to do really well in the team division, but you got to watch out for the Mayhem individual athletes as well. Yeah. So so let me let me say one thing about, well, more than one thing, but, um, <laughs> I mean, I know that it's been, uh, you know, talked about and talked about and talked about, but just listen to Rich Froning's open performances since 2012. Three first place in the overall open, two second place, six top five, eight top tens, and ten top twenties. He hasn't finished outside of the top twenty since 2012, and only a couple of those, only two of those times, has he been outside of the top ten. That is, that is bonkers. That's bonkers to 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 think about. Man, you would think that guy's won like. A bunch of fittest on earth titles. <laughs> that, guy's off his got, that guy's got some fitness, apparently. Um, yeah, he has a little bit think, of fitness. Do you think this will be his last year? If it's, it uh, won't be. If, it won't be if it won't be if Reykjavik, uh, Reykjavik, or another team, maybe like Invictus, uh, if if they pull it off. I mean, I think he's under the impression that it probably is, but uh, if I can only speculate. Uh, this is probably his strong. This is probably the strongest team he's ever put together. Now, now, granted, we talk about that, but however, I think last year's team probably would have been the strongest team. Not last, um, uh, sorry, two years ago when uh, Panchik was on the team that we never got to see. I think mm-hmm. that would have been probably the greatest. If he, that team would have competed at the games, then we would probably be talking about the greatest team ever. Uh, but unfortunately, we never saw that. So this uh, iteration with Samuel is going to be probably go down as one of the best. It's just like so flawless when you watch him and just to think mm-hmm. the longevity of his performance. Um, Joe, Look, you, you have that... in the background. The... <laughs> Wait, where are you, PC? <laughs> um, somewhere there. In. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joe, what are your some some of your hot takes that you have? I want to see that uh, the flashcards now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well I did I, before we go before we leave the training camps thing. I did want to ask I did want to yeah. ask PC a question. So, um, you know, looking at the leaderboard, obviously we see proven athletes up there um, in the top. We see mayhem athletes. We see the brute strength athletes up there. Um, we don't see a lot of the underdogs crew super mm-hmm. high up. Um, mm-hmm. Was that kind of, you think that's kind of a strategy where they, uh, where Justin Kotler and, and crew are just trying to prime and, and, and peak 
at the right time at semifinals where the open doesn't matter as much. Um, you know, I was looking at Bethany Shadburn's finish and Daniel Brandon, and, and by no means are these bad finishes, but it's, it's clear that it's not how high they finished previously. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. That's exactly what it is. Uh, Kotler, he has them on his schedule where they're going to peak. They're, they're going to have multiple peaks, but they're the biggest peak will become come right before, right during semifinals. So, you know, especially with, you know, you know, that type of athlete, that Bethany is where she's had suffered some injuries here and there. Uh, Danielle's coming off a back injury. That's kind of annoyed her this off season. So he's kind of taking it easy. And, but that shows you their level of fitness where they're barely trying, I guess, you know, however you want to say, it, but they're still having great finishes. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what's going on right now. And he, he's not panicked at all by, it. of course he's not. He's actually really encouraged by how they're doing, especially coming out of 22.3. If you look at both of, for instance, Bethany and uh, Danielle's times and those are, they're, those are, I think both in the top 50. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean them, uh, I'm not concerned about training a think tank, even though I think Sarah had an amazing open finish considering, you know, what she just, the scare she had at Wadapalooza and then also yeah. her, publicly saying hey i'm doing one and done it doesn't really matter you know yep and um i'm yeah, really still, impressed by her still carded a top 50 finish coming in 48th i think um this yeah. year um yeah. which is which is great i mean there, there are a few athletes that are just just slightly outside of the top 10 um that that i'm that i've got my eye on um uh the two two women who tied at 16th both had their best opens uh ever annika Greer, annika Greer and ariel lowen um, yep. Both athletes have had a couple of great, uh, well, at least a uh, really great season, um, off season for, for Greer. She's first in Canada, um, 16th in the Open. That's up from 58th worldwide and ninth in Canada. For, um, for Lowen, she's eighth in the U.S., 16th overall. Again, that's a big improvement from the previous year where she was 100th in the U.S. and 145 mm -hmm. overall. Um, both of them had great performances. Both of them have had a steady uh, steady improvement over the last almost 12, 12 months at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I'm super pumped about them. No, and when sorry. we talk about like looking further down on the leaderboard, there are some people that we might've expected to see further up on the leaderboard. Do you guys want to talk about that? I know yeah. that Joe and, and PC, <laughs> it, it's just like the new format and with people only doing one and done, some athletes just aren't putting that emphasis on the open at this stage. I, one thing I want to bring up is Noah, Noah's performance. Obviously mm -hmm. he started off, I think he had finished like 600th and 600th and 20, uh, 22.1. But then the last mm -hmm. two, he just ripped off top 10 finishes. And the most amazing thing is 22.3. He was basically the, one of the first athletes to do 22.3. Oh, put right a score immediately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, immediately. And then and wasn't afraid to throw his scores up there. It's like, okay, this is the time to beat. And he still finished at a, what I think six overall. Yeah, so four twenty seven. Yeah. He had he had all these, you know, he he did it. And I mean it, it shows you it's just how confident he is and how good of an athlete is. I mean, we haven't really talked too much about him this off season. Uh, and you know, didn't had a, didn't have his best games finished. And then he, you know, he was dealing with some things, maybe some injuries and just trying to stay healthy. And uh, he didn't, he elected not to participate in some of these uh, off season competitions outside of uh, running a mat, running it back with the boys at Wadapalooza. But I, 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 I'm really impressed by what he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even here, I mean, he almost won 22.2, but then had a deduction because of starting yep. in front of the barbell instead of the side. So I think even that, like, talks to the level of his fitness that some people might be undermining him because of how we saw him finish at the games last year, returning from an injury. But, injury, but I do think that he is still a contender. He's still a name that um, we should be throwing in the mix. Yeah, and that first workout, 22.1, he was part of that live announcement, him and Pat. So it's a first first workout, and he was one and done anyways. I'm sure if he would have went back and retested that, he probably would have had a top 20 finish, not even a top 10 finish in that workout because he's actually pretty good on his hands. So, Joe, your there flash are, card? Uh, <laughs> well, there, there, on, on the men's side, there are a handful of athletes who had who had their, you know, quote-unquote worst open finish, but we're talking about a new format, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Olsen... Um, 107th, that's his lowest finish since 2012. Um, but again, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's 107th out, out of the world, first of all. 
And, you know, second of all, you know, that gets him into quarterfinals by like whatever, 6,800 spots or something <laughs> like that. Um, he has some room to spare. But, you know, Roman Krennikov, we've talked a lot about him in the, uh, in the last couple of weeks. 138th, that's his lowest since 2017, which was his first year. Um, the big one, Brent Fakowski, 993rd. Um, his previous worst open finish was uh, since 2013 was 184th, and that was in 2018. In 2018, he also won regionals and took fourth at the mm-hmm. games. Um, yeah. But again, we know that you know he is the professor, and I'm sure that this was completely calculated and one and done, and you know just make sure to get to the next stage and peak at the right time. You know, Pat Vellner is another one. Had took took fourth on twenty two point two, but still finished um, 69th overall. Um, lowest open finish since two thousand fifteen, but again, more than more than room to spare to make it into the next stage um, of competition. So I think what we're seeing is just a, as athletes um, transition into this new 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 stage, we're going to see I think this kind of thing a little bit more. Hey, Lauren, something that I. I... I know we're talking about the bottom of the, uh, not the bottom, but the, uh, you know, Lower on the 11 through 50th. Yeah. But there's yep. someone actually, it, she ties into the top 10. It's Cara Saunders. Um, if you look at the top 10 of the uh, women's leaderboard, you have three women in the top 10 from the Oceania region, or uh, I guess semifinal now. Yep. And, and one of them, Jamie Simmons, is someone who was hurt last year. Yeah. And for her to come back and finish 10th shows her where her level of fitness is, is at right now. But then you have Ellie Turner. Ellie Turner was that last person that, you know, off the Oceana only gets three spots to the games. She, she got that third spot. A lot of people say she got it by default because Tia was competing in the U.S. Yeah, she got an exemption, competed in the U.S. So now... We don't foresee any exemptions, and Tia will probably be uh, competing in her semifinal, looking ahead, in her semifinal this year, and they only have three spots. Mm-hmm. And one of those spots, if you look at the top ten, I mean, if you can grab those top ten, but then you have Cara Saunders, who's mm-hmm. outside the top ten. So there, there's four women right there, um, three of them who are top ten podium caliber athletes. But they're they're only going to be fighting for three spots. So I think it's a. I, I know Brian Friend is really uh, adamant about this, but the Oceania region is going to. You're going to have an athlete who could easily be in the top fifteen, mm-hmm. not be at the games. Yeah, because of the the format, and it's unfortunate because again, looking at the top ten from the Open, you have Tia, you have uh, Ellie Turner and Jamie Simmons there, and then Cara Saunders out, out outside the top ten, and then you also have like people like uh, Jessica Coughlin, uh, Laura Clifton. Uh, Maddie Sturt. I mean, they're all games level. They've been to the games, and they're games caliber athletes. But they're 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 all going to be fighting for three spots. So, um, you know, Cara Saunders, she had a really, uh, especially her last uh, last twenty two point three, where she did her workout outside in the rain. Yeah, um, wasn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah, I don't know how she hung on to the bar, or like I just think of the amount of chalk that you would need to <laughs> stick on a bar to do bar muscle ups, and she's out there in the mm-hmm. pouring rain. Unbelievable. But she's an, I mean, that's just the type of level athlete you're dealing with, but yeah. there's a potential, there's a potential that she might not be at the games. So crazy to think about that. I just kind of wanted to bring that up before we move on to something mm-hmm. else that, that the Oceania region uh, just based off the open is probably going to be, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be missing some people from there. And it's not because of no, no fault of their own. It's a fault of the system. Brian Friend, I'm sure, is already getting ready to write the next piece where he argues that Oceania should get more spots at the games. <laughs> that and Europe. And, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, another thing I wanted to bring up, and hopefully Joe doesn't have this on one of his cards, is looking at the leaderboard for men, the contrast between the men and the women. Look, Joe, no cards. Um, if, you look at, if you look at the first page, the top 50, <laughs> if you look at the top 50 of the uh, leaderboard for the women, you see a lot of flags. A lot of different. Flags. Oh yeah, yeah. Ah. And if you look at the men's, I didn't even think of that. If you look at the men's top fifty, you yeah. see a lot of North American flags. Yep. So, yep. Again, and this goes back to maybe something that Brian's working on as well is like you have a <laughs> lot of European flags on a top fifty, and again, Europe is only going to be sending you know ten athletes to the game through their semifinal. 
Yeah. And yeah. again, but if you if you do the math, and I haven't done the math, I'm pretty sure that the, just based off the open, that the European athletes probably make up half, if not more, of that top fifty on that first page. So again, so. you're you're again you're going to have some misrepresentation or underrepresentation of a, a region um, based on the current system. And it, I don't. That's another topic of discussion, and I'm sure that's something that Brian would love to come on and talk about uh, how well, how we could fix it, not us fix it, but maybe some suggestions. <laughs> but but that's just something I know it's right off the bat. It's like looking at the the women's uh, leaderboard. There is represented representative CrossFit as a community where it's more global, and then you go to the men's, and it's more North American dominant. I, I, I want. Wanna... I want. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Nope. Go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. I was going to move wanna... on to something. Well, else, no, I was going to so... I was going to move on to something else as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to talk. I wanted to talk about Emma Carey for a minute. Oh. Um, as an athlete that you know, we talked a lot about last season. Came out in twenty two point one and took third overall with her um, jumping wall walks. I don't know if any of you saw that video, but um, she kind of jumps halfway up the wall on her first uh, her first step. Um, but then dropped in her. There you go. Like then that. dropped um, in twenty two point two to almost 10,000th, right? 9,475th 9, place in the second workout. Um, and ultimately finished 2,476th place. Last year, she took second. Um, now, she's been injured. She's, she's been very uh, notably been dealing with a back injury. So 22.2, obviously, you want to be careful there and come mm -hmm. into quarterfinals and semifinals completely healthy. Um, but you know, um, it is worth talking about that she finished second last year and 2,476 this year. I, uh, I agree with that. And I think what we should be talking about is I think we're seeing her mature as an athlete, a smarter athlete as well. Um, mm -hmm. younger, young, younger Emma Carey and those who've seen her or talked to her, she's a competitor. And now, and this was prior to her being down in a training camp. So she's down in the training camp with all these stud athletes, Dallin, you know, her friends that she's norm that she competes with every day for her to take a step back in those other two workouts. It says a shows lot maturity. about her. It shows a lot of maturity and it shows, and, and again, we'll, we're going to sing his praises again. Matt Torres is coaching his ability to get through those young, those young, I mean, her, she's a teenager. Tell, tell a 17 year old, no, stop back, especially <laughs> one like her where everything's on. It shows a lot. It shows a lot. And uh, I, I applaud her for that. So I'm not, I'm not too overly concerned about the fin, uh, her, where she places, you know, obviously the questions are there about her back. I mean, you know, it, it made her withdraw from, um, from Dubai, which she was very upset about. And then she wasn't able to compete at Wadapalooza. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think, I think we're, we're going to see something good if she, if she is indeed healthy and um, and peaking at the right moment. But uh, I just want to applaud if that's the case, and I want to applaud her maturity and her growing mm -hmm. as an athlete. And twenty two point one certainly showed her uh, where her fitness is at right now. Yes. Um, if if it's not if it's not just trying to be careful and be safe, then use you know take the take the reins off, and that's what you see. Yeah, because I, I'm knowing the type of athlete she is. 22, both those workouts, 22.2, 22.3, those should be work, good workouts for. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe not, not maybe not top 10, but those are definitely workouts where she would easily be, you know, top 20, top 25. Because that that deadlift, that weight at any other given day, a healthy Emma Carey, that's nothing for her because that mm -hmm. she she she's actually really good at pulling. So another athlete that I want to talk about, uh, it's somebody who is going to be a storyline from the moment that we knew he was going to be competing this season. Ricky Garrard, he finished the Open 26th overall. Um, was kind of the middle of the pack, I I would say, for the three workouts. What are your guys' initial thoughts of, of seeing him in the top 30 for the Open? Go ahead, Joe. Start off. I, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I think – I, it's not it's not surprising um you know that 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 placement um obviously his showing in um uh in the off season um illustrated how how where his fitness is at um taking a podium at uh dubai in, unless i'm unless i'm wrong about that it's dubai it was dubai correct 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 um yeah good yeah taking the taking the podium <laughs> uh, podium position to dubai 
And then he had he, he also had to withdraw from Wadapalooza um, due to some illness. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, nothing, nothing really surprising about this. I mean, um, I, I, I don't imagine that he was uh, trying to peak for this, but I, I think he wanted to use it as a barometer. This is my speculation here, but use it as a barometer for where he's at heading into the season. And if I was Ricky, I would be pretty happy with where I'm at. Yeah, I agree. He's definitely um, – I think that's a great placing for him. I don't think he was – I mean, he's obviously a competitor, but he's one of those – he's he's an athlete that everyone's going to realize how good, he, a good of an athlete he is when he gets to Torian semifinal and when he gets to the games, if he makes it to the games. Because obviously his bread and butters, his engine, his cardio, um, those running-type workouts – um, and then he, and, and, and classic CrossFit, he's really good at classic CrossFit as well. Um, so for him to finish right around that, I think it's, it's, you know, training by himself. I mean, he has his brother there as well, but just doing these workouts, um, and not having a true test of his, of his, uh, strength. I think it's great. I think he's right where he's supposed to be. Again, he's an underdog athlete as well, mm-hmm. and he's not close to being pe- close to not peaking yet. Mm. But, you know, I think it's, uh, I think, I think he should be really happy with that. And, um, and, you know, we'll see what happens in quarterfinals when there are maybe something that is more along the line of his wheelhouse, but I, I would, I would expect to see some more, some him improving from here on out. When we talk about the way that the open is structured now and athletes for the most part are only doing a one and done, you have somebody like Noah Olson who does the workout immediately posts his score. Something else that we're seeing with a lot of these top level athletes is whether they have their own photographer following them or vlogger, we're seeing a lot more of the athletes videos, any noteworthies or takeaways that you have from what you saw on social media or on YouTube. It makes it makes me question, uh, you know, all the shady videos we saw back in the day, like up to like two years ago when it looked like everything was shot up from a potato. <laughs> so, <laughs> it makes me wonder. I mean, uh, but especially now when you have these all these highly produced, you know, like, you know, swooping in drone drone shots, like something like, you know, uh, Martin Scorsese shot or something like that. But uh, uh, it, it shows especially now with you have so many training camps now and athletes associated with them and um, this becoming a professional sport. It's, it, it's, it's a great thing. I think it's a smart thing for the athletes because when it gets them out there, it gives them a platform. It, it's not only selling their training, it's selling them. Uh, hopefully sponsors mm-hmm. will see this. They'll watch these, uh, especially like proven's a perfect example uh, Patty Orr and his team there. Uh, they're, they're doing, they're putting out great content. Um, you know, I'm sure HWPO is putting out, they're going to start putting out some good stuff as well. I mean, you know, those are just some, I mean, underdogs, they, I like what underdogs was doing where they were like packaging these uh, competitions against each other, you know, like Daniel Brandon versus, you know, Matt DeLugo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was really cool. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, I think it's a good thing. Uh, I think these athletes, you know, they, they're smart to do this and their managers are smart to do this, their coaches, Mm -hmm. their training. It's, it's, it just makes me question the why wasn't this being done before <laughs> instead of being shot with their iPhone three and their flip phone. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> they're, they're just keeping these good cameras off to the side, you know, I 100% agree. I, uh, I think it's a good thing. I think it's good for the sport. I think it's good for the athletes. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think that we saw some, some, some really great performances um, in those videos too. Um, and you know, just, you, you just, you just showed Emma Carey's jumping wall walk. I mean, uh, after seeing that, I, I went into my gym and tried it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How'd it go, it Joe? It, it didn't go well. Uh, it, didn't go, it didn't go super well for me, but, um, but you know, I mean, yeah. So I think, I think absolutely nothing. I think it's, I think it's a great thing, um, for the sport. As we head into quarterfinals in these next stages, how much actual weight can, you two as sports analysts, people in this environment, how much weight can we put in their ranking? It, it Can we really analyze it? Or is it something that each stage we're just doing a fresh start? Um, I think, I think we definitely could use the data, um, especially, I mean, they, they, you, you mentioned each stage, but 
I, for me personally, I wrap the open and quarterfinals as one stage because it's only, especially individually, it's only, it's like, le- it's like eight days between the two. Yep. Um, and, uh, and it's just like a continuation, te- continuation of test, whether it be five or six workouts that you have for the quarterfinals, we don't know, but then you add that with what they've already been tested and you hope that the same, um, the same muscle groups, the same, the same, uh, tests aren't being used the same, whether it be pushing or pulling that these would be more varied as opposed to what the open had. So I kind of looked at as look into that as one stage. And then, and then after that, it gives, uh, you almost have like a month off mm-hmm. before semifinals comes around, mm-hmm. then another month off for the game stage. So, um, in terms of the rankings and stuff like that, I definitely think we can use that. I definitely. I mean, the, like what we just talked about before the video, I mean, we can see a, a no athlete out there. These athletes, especially those in the top 200 and the ones nothing to take away from the other athletes, the elite athletes in the top 200, they, you can't tell me they weren't out there trying their hardest. I mean, they, they were out there pushing themselves because that's how they're wired. I mean, you know, you can't tell Noah, you know, Hey, 22.3, just kind of go 85%. Throttle back. <laughs> Throttle yeah. back. No, no, mm-hmm. not that at all. Not, especially not in these training camps that people are, because yeah. <laughs> you're, you're going head to head against someone. You can't tell me that, you know, I, because again, if I see Joe passing me up, passing me up <laughs> in any type of workout, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to try to beat him. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. what my, my mind or my conditioning says. I'm going to try to beat sure. him. That's what these, sure. that's what these athletes are. They're competitors. So yeah, th- we certainly can look at these rankings and, and we can certainly look at the data that it provides and kind of base some stuff off of it. Now, is it 100%? No, not at all. Because like we talked about before, they're far from peaking, but it gives us a baseline to start it. Yeah, it's a, it's a barometer. You know, you get a sense of where people are at. Um, but, you know, as, as Patrick is saying, you know, scoreboard resets to zero um, mm-hmm. this week. Um, so it's a, you know, we, the data is helpful for an analytical perspective and, and, and the athletes themselves are using it for that too. But, um, you know, but it's a, but it's a new, it's a new game. The new, new game starts this week. What do you think about the leaderboard resetting to the next stage? Do you think that that's a good thing or do you wish that it would just carry through to the next stage? I think if you reset it and you name it a quarterfinals, what I think is then you need to put prize money with it. I mean, just, ah. I know that's a different topic of discussion, but that's just, <laughs> that's initially what, that's initially yeah. what popped up in my head. Um, mm-hmm. And bravo the CrossFit for them, you know, releasing their new uh, pay structure for the games. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. But I, I definitely think if you're going to have these athletes get tested again, then you need to compensate them for, or provide something for them to get compensated for. You can't mm-hmm. tell me, um, if you're in fifth place and you have a cha- outside chance, like I, I brought that up in my um, in my uh, takeaways, like the men's go heading into twenty two point three. You had a seven person race to win the open, fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Yeah. You can't tell me that those guys went and won an extra fifteen thousand dollars in their pocket. So if you do that with the open, guess what? You you don't run the risk of what you have in the open, where you have athletes saying, "Oh, I was one and done and wasn't really trying." let's raise the stakes a little bit for the, for the quarterfinals. I know that it is raised a little bit, actually a lot because your semifinal birth um, invite is based off that, but throw some money out there for these guys Mm -hmm. and and women. They they're, they're busting their ass. They deserve that. And, you know, they're obviously paying, they're paying, they're paying, they're paying CrossFit to register for it. So they're paying into it. Let them get something else out of it. Sure. Joe, do you think the leaderboard should reset? I think that if it didn't reset, then I think that this, the open strategy would be different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you the idea of the, the kind of the one and done and, you know, Pat Vellner kind of, you know, coming in, you know, almost 70th place, 69th place, Brent Fakowski 993rd or whatever. I don't think that you see that. I think that you see yeah. folks selling out, um, you know, but knowing that it does reset and you just have to get through the open and just train you know, how many athletes have we seen in interviews or talking on podcasts or wherever that, you know, just one and done. I don't want it to interrupt my training through the open and then, you know, on to quarterfinals, um, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, if it, if it was a cumulative score across the first two stages, then I think that we would see a different open strategy for people. Hmm. All It'd right, guys, really the open... 
it'd be really similar to what we had in 2020 with the online the online stage versus the game stage. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we thought the open leaderboard would be finalized right now at the time of the recording. We waited until 8.15 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time on Friday, but now we know that it's not officially going to be finalized until Monday at noon Pacific time. So some of these things could change. We're hopeful that most of um, the top storylines that we were talking about will stay the same, but any final thoughts or Joe, any more hot takes in your flashcards that <laughs> maybe we missed and we want to touch on before. we? I, I, I've got so many others, but you know what? I feel like this was a really good discussion and uh, I don't want to take us off in any more tangents. Yeah, we should. The leaderboard <laughs> will be, uh, will be set on the 21st. So that's when registration opens for quarterfinals as well. Mm -hmm. And that's also, I believe, right, the day that the floor plans for yes. the quarterfinal workouts will be released as well. So yeah. that's going to be a big news day. <laughs> like we haven't had enough of those recently. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lauren, uh, before – yeah, are you nervous? Because you're sitting in a quarterfinal spot right now. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, I love quarterfinals. I'm actually the type of person that doesn't really do well in the open. I'm I'm better at some of the heavy barbell higher skill movements. So uh, 22.1 as like a capacity test that and for 15 minutes, that was my literal nightmare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited to see some heavy barbells, uh, some handstand walking. You know, it it's gonna be a fun time. But I'm curious. A little bit of they, a little bit of bench press. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. The bench today. Uh, I did some wave sets of, of bench pressing. I worked up to a heavy double. So I feel like I'm I'm primed and I'm ready. Whether it shows up in a Metcon or maybe it's just for uh, a heavy triple or something, we'll see. But it'll be interesting. I'm excited. It's it's funny you said that. I talked to like I believe ten athletes, maybe a little bit more, and today all of them incorporated like a bro stash oh, yeah. bunch bench press in the <laughs> workout. It's so great. It's so awesome. I would, I would love, I would love to see something like the 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 other CrossFit total thrown in as mm -hmm. the strength component. Something like yeah. that. That would be awesome. Um, yeah. That would that would I would I would be super pumped for that. Um, I, I initially, and I've seen a lot of people online say that you know, Oh, Linda, Linda, Linda. But on the, on the equipment list, there's only one barbell. So you, you, <laughs> exactly. need, you need three barbells to do that workout. So, um, you know, that would be fun when they did Linda in regionals. What was that? 2018. That was super fun. To watch. Yep. Um, so, um, but yeah, love to see some bench press in the, in, in the quarterfinals. I'm curious though, what their standard is going to be because was it the, the team series a couple of years ago? Mm -hmm. Um, the standard was a little bit different, whether you could have like the arch of your back come off mm. or like judging it if somebody's, uh, like glutes came off. So, uh, yeah. I'm surprised that they put it in there just because in the past it's been so hard to judge. So I'll be curious to see what, um, what their standard is when they were as, as, as a guy, as a person was on the floor in 2018, uh, as a judge at, at two regionals that year, um, the, the standard probably will stay the same that they had in 2018, if it, if indeed it did have uh, a bench press, because it was a pretty easy standard to fall where, you know, your butt and your shoulder blades had to be had to stay mm -hmm. connected to the bench and, and and your feet as well. The feet cannot come off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so we uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they'll keep that standard as well. I mean, it's it's pretty easy standard to follow, in my opinion. It was in pretty easy to judge as well. Okay. And unless that's I'm wrong, enough. that's the that's the. That's the standard in powerlifting meets as well. Sure. Feet, Correct. Glutes, shoulders. Um, yep. Although they also have a dead stop on the chest, and there's some other stuff. But um, sure. but that's but that's the contact. Those are the contact points um, for uh, powerlifting standard. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else the flat bench would be used for. Really, I mean, we've we've joked among ourselves about some other possibilities. <laughs> um, some uh, one rep max hip barbell hip thrust. Um, the koala challenge for time, <laughs> um, that kind of thing. But um, I'm That's not sure. That's my what personal else, what favorite. Else the, the, the I flat think bench bouldering. Yep, bouldering it is bench bouldering. They're gonna punk us, and they're gonna they're gonna give us a workout, and there's gonna be like some kind of window where there's a mandatory rest, 
and that's where the bench is going to be used. <laughs> Use bench yeah. for two minute rest. <laughs> yeah, sit on the bench, and the judge has to be there making sure you stay. Your butt stays right, on that you bench. Must <laughs> stay on the bench that's nine feet away from your barbell or the ring yeah. or whatever it is. Something we might we, like outlandish. We, we should have an idea, I suppose, Monday when we see the floor plans. I mean, we well at least have yeah. a better sense of you know we won't know for sure, but we'll have a better sense of how it's going to be utilized. I suppose. Yeah. 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 Some good things ahead. Patrick, Joe, thank you so much for talking to us about the open leaderboard that's almost entirely finalized. <laughs> We're almost on to the next stage. We have some good things coming in the mix. So hopefully you guys all stay tuned with Morning Chalk Up. You know we'll have all of the info as it's breaking. Joe, um, he doesn't have hair. Otherwise, it would be on fire almost every day as he's trying to pump this news out <laughs> to get it to you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. Hey, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks a lot, Lauren.